My name is Nabil al Wahabi. I'm playing Mr. Farouk in oil. So this has been actually very interesting in terms of Carrie as a director is an incredibly open in her kind of creativeness. She, she doesn't like to nail things down too early and I really like working like that. Um, it takes a certain confidence and a certain intelligence to be able to do that and I feel in such safe hands. The whole company is allowed to, um, is kind of uh, partakes in that kind of process. So in one way it's quite scary because you're kind of all out at sea, <coughs> but at least you're out at sea together. Um, it's very exciting. I think the first thing that you need to bring to the room is um, an openness. You have to bring kind of an openness. I, this, is, this wouldn't be necessarily the best process for people who are quite binary or structural. Or I need to know where I'm going on that line. I don't think this would make you feel very confident. This, you have to come with a certain creativity and a certain openness and the willingness to try things that may or may not work. But I think in the pursuit of that ambition, even though you may make lots of, you know, mistakes, errors, whatever you want to call, you'll find something really special. And we have, we found some really fantastic things, I think. Um, I would, I would argue this is, despite the fact that I'm only in two scenes, the narcissist in me is like, I want to be in more! But the reality is, I so believe in this project. It's such a fantastic piece of work. And I would go as far as saying it's Important's the wrong word, but it really reflects, I think, a kind of a, um, a bigger debate, a bigger dialogue, a bigger conversation about our relationship with oil and relationship with power, a relationship with each other, all those things that are really kind of attacks. Ella Hickson, I think she's written something so profound and, and clearly quite, I assume, because she's not said this, but I, I can. My feeling is it's come from somewhere very personal. Because there's some stuff in there which is kind of, when I first read it, the word that jumps into my mind was lacerating. <laughs> there's parts of it which are like, oh my God, that's really painful. In particular, obviously the, the mother-daughter dynamic. You know, relationship mm -hmm. with loved ones, dealing with mortality, dealing with how we feel about the world and what you should give us and all those things are you know i think they're very primal things and um, again you know I, this, I don't see any value in praising people for the sake of it but you know i mean Anne marie is just it's remarkable really something else really really something else um and uh, and in the room kind of atmosphere carrie's always been very open about people just basically piping up oh why don't we try this or why don't we try that whereas i think a lot of there has to be a kind of a tacit approval and a tacit agreement in a group uh, of trust and also ultimately deferring to her decision because she's the boss. And I think that's, that's a really nice balance. You know, I think, you know, I've been in, the, in, in plays and productions and pieces where, you know, it's kind of like committee and nobody gets anywhere. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, need some, you need to facilitate somebody's vision. You can feed into that. You can, you know, bring your own things into it, but ultimately, you know, you're, you're serving the story via them. Mr. Fruit for me is more than just an incidental kind of character, not that Ella's written, written him that way, but what I mean, let me qualify what I mean, what I mean is that it deals with a period of history in the 1970s in North Africa, me being North African myself, not from Libya, but from Morocco, but dealing with a changing of the guard, people re-appropriating um, their resources, reappropriating, you know, taking back control after years of, whether it was, you know, uh, the British or whether it was the Italians or, you know, this was, a, there's a sweeping change going on in the world, which is now we're, we're still being affected by. And Gaddafi and the Revolution Command Council and the people around him, you know, they were the vanguard of that period. They were the ones who were, rushing forward and doing this. Um, it's very easy because all these names are very loaded now, you know, you think Gaddafi, you think Mahama. But actually when you go back and you look at history and you look at the record, you find that these guys was, were serious characters. And of course power corrupts, that's what it does. So eventually, you know, it's the hubris that gets you. Um, but I find that he represents that, he represents that voice, he represents that need to be taken seriously, to be listened to, not to be ignored 
not to be walked over anymore. And I and I find that very powerful. So I I'm, I'm very happy about that. You know, and giving them a kind of an authentic voice.